In this video, we're going to discuss sheet metal styles and how they apply to our files inside of Autodesk Inventor. So here with the sheet metal styles IPT from our working files directory, I have a face and a flange created inside this part. So if I were to unfold this, it has certain deformation that goes into that material. How do I define this? Well, let's first take a look at our sheet metal defaults. If I look here, my current sheet metal rule is set to default, so it doesn't really have anything set to it. The thickness is currently 0.12 inches for this as well. Now, if I were to change this to my 10 gauge stainless steel 25 millimeter, it's going to adjust my thickness value. It's going to adjust my unfold rule. I'm gonna choose okay, and it's made the change. There was a very, very slight change that occurred in the background. You may not have seen it because it went so fast, but it did change the material quality for me, and it also changed the color. So let me look at another sheet metal default. This time I'll choose the 3 16 40 millimeter. I'll choose OK there. And again, we have made a change to the overall thickness of the part, as well as the material properties and our compensation for how this unfolds. Now, how do we define these rules? Well, if I go back to sheet metal defaults, I can click on the sheet metal rule icon here. If I would like to adjust the unfold rule, I can click on that pencil icon as well. When you do this, it actually looks into your local styles you have inside of your current file. And you can also reference external styles you might have in your styles library. For now, I'll click on the first pencil icon up here to edit the sheet metal rule. And here I see my styles and standards editor. It's currently my read write library. I can see here I have my sheet which is currently a mild steel, this thickness value, and this unfold rule. Now this unfold rule is a different node we see on the left-hand side. So we have our rule that references one of these unfold methods down below. We then have our controls for our flat pattern bend angle. We have our flat pattern punch representation for how that's going to appear. On the bend tab, we have our default bend settings. On the corner tab, we have our default corner settings when we have a two bend or a three bend intersection. So let's take a look at this unfold rule now. This was our 3 16 40 millimeter. So if I expand that, take a look at here in the tree, I can see this is utilizing a bend table. Now, this is one of our methods of compensation. We can actually put this out on a test fixture in our shop. We can do the different bends that we get at one degree, 20 degrees, 45 degrees and then put in our deformation value for what happens at that particular angle. So this really involves you doing a lot of actual physical testing. We could also choose a custom equation. So we can write a custom equation based on the criteria we see before us to tell it how this needs to deform. If we're using a linear value, this is going to be a generic K factor value. A good K factor is usually between 0.25 and 0.5, and this is a percentage of the linear axis of no deformation in your metal. Most material K factors can be found from a machinist handbook. So we have three different types of unfolding methods there. If I look at some of the other rules, I'm not gonna save the edits here. I have a bend table there, bend table there, and also a bend table there. On bend compensation, here I have a predefined equation set up for this one. And on default K factor, I have the 0.44. So again, that controls that when you flatten your metal, how much stretch and sag gets applied to the overall extents. So it understands what size it needs to be before it goes into your water jet cutter or your laser machine, whatever else you're using to create your pieces. Now you can see I'm currently listing all my styles. If I go up here and look at local styles, you can see it really doesn't change much because my local styles are basically the same as my all styles. I don't have a very large database of styles in my design data directory right now. However, as you go along, you can build this out. If you need to save these styles, you can basically export them or save them to the style library to reutilize them in other files. Here I'm going to click done. And that's our look there at our sheet metal defaults. I'll go ahead and close that. You should take the time to figure out how you're actually defining your metal. And this might depend on what kind of shop you are. If you're a shop that only cares about the folded piece and you send out all your sheet metal to an external supplier or vendor to do all the laser cutting and bending for you, 
then you don't have to worry about the flat patterning that much because they're going to take care of that with their own equations and their own methodologies. You might just be responsible for creating the folded piece. If you actually manufacture in-house, you definitely should work with your team on the shop floor for how you're actually bending this metal. Is it good enough that the K factor, the default value from the machinist handbook is a good setting for you? Or should I go through and do a bend compensation chart with our physical testing or do a custom equation based on the information I know about our metal? These are all things you have to determine as you're starting to use sheet metal to make sure what you're actually modeling is actually what you're producing. Don't think that this is something you can just glance over. You definitely need to think about this and what your utilization of that flattened metal will be.